Celestial Church of Christ was founded by Reverend Samuel Bilihu Joseph Oshofa on the 29th of September 1947 in the Republic of Benin. It is said to be one of the fastest growing Christian faith groups in Nigeria with an increasingly significant membership overseas. It is estimated that there are more than 3 million members in over 28 countries across the world and in the UK and Northern Ireland there are about 10,000 worshippers that identify as Celestians. To celebrate the Golden Jubilee anniversary of the overseas Douses, we've documented the arrival of the church in the UK in 1968 as retold by eyewitnesses. Our religious knowledge, our teacher invited us to uh, Mokola Parish, CCC, in 1964 for their first uh, anniversary. And uh, the Holy Ghost descended on me. And Papa was there, and Papa was very interested. Uh, we Anglican students for what God has done that day. Since the Papa kept calling me Wuli uh, Anglican, so God be the glory. When I finished my education, Mrs. Salaya used to be our body house teacher. So we used to pray and the Holy Ghost will descend on us. We nearly turned Anglican school to Celestial school. Anyway, as God so loved it, they used to give us messages in the church that uh, I'm taking, God is going to use me, but I don't understand. Because I was so young. I was under 20, 21, maybe 20 or nearly 20. I just take it as a joke. But Mrs. Salaya had interest. So when I got here, I didn't tell my husband anything. But the landlord, the landlord took up the phone. I left a message that when Mrs. Salaya comes, I asked of her, she said she's living there, but she has gone to work. Tell her that Bola Dale John is now in London, and this is my address. Uh, for a short time, when I got pregnant, Miss Alaya would come to her house. We would go to her house. Ah, she said, This is your teacher, I like you too much. I said, Yes. When she's sitting down, myself and Miss Alaya we will go out to talk. That ah. I said, I can't mention Selena. I don't know anything. No. Because the husband too doesn't want to hear anything about Selena. So, one lovely day, I don't know, my baby was maybe the angel put him to sleep. Then my husband just came in and he said he met me rolling on the bed, going up and down. Ah, he said, what is wrong with you? And this and that. He was saying, ah, he called the neighbors that helped me. I don't know what's wrong with how. Ah. Then one of the lady in the house told him that this is not sickness, so let us have patience. That's how they decided to have patience. Then it was then they said the Holy Spirit came out and said, This is God speaking to them that you want to send him on an errand. Then he said, No, which are uh, where? I've been working since morning. I can't go anywhere. You better get up. <laughs> He was the one telling me all this story. After uh, how many hours when I got up, he said he refused to go. Then the Holy Spirit told him that, okay, if you don't go, leave her alone then. Until when you do what I ask you to do, your wife will be like that. So he said he questioned the Holy Spirit as, who are you? Who are you speaking in? Leave my wife alone and this and that. He said, okay, you don't believe. You go and go to where I'm sending you. The person is not in. 
it's nothing and you want me to go from here from lab grove to shepherd bush and when you get down from the shepherd bush station you have to take bus to another five stop he said he refused but later because of me he have to go it's when they got there that god gave funke message about because he was uh, he was you know he wants god to bless her with uh, fruit of the womb he said god gave her message and god said so many things to the people because it this nigerian house <laughs> all the people in that house they are yoruba Ibo. so they were all gathered in our room and the old people they gave them messages and they said this is celestial church of christ that god brought this thing and so he was then done that time when after the message i got up so when i got up when i see plenty of people i say what's happened ah they say don't ask us what's happened it's you you should ask we which one is celestia which one is jobimo where do you go it's method is i know you where, which one is celestia i said celestia okay and no celestia now what's happened he said ah. they read the message i said you know what with this message you are telling me all what i would like you to do is to phone mommy mrs solaya she is the only one who can tell you i don't know anything about all this message but only mrs solaya will explain better we came to this my, my husband came to this country 1963 i joined him 1964 when we came here to london we worshiped in anglican church for some times before we got to know the existence of celestial church of christ in london which was situated in Berryman Road, number two, Berryman Road, N4. We were introduced to this church by Mr. Ogunkola at that time. But when we came to Berryman Road, Mama Olale Olaya told us the way this church was, was founded, that it was uh, Mama, uh, Mama Adeni Jolu prophesied that there should be Celestial Church in London. That's how it started. Being that, being that uh, Mama Olaya and Adeni Jolu, they have known each other from Nigeria. So, as far as church, uh, Celestial Church is concerned, so immediately that thing happened, I think they told Yaolaya who knew much about Celestia. Then we sat down, we wrote a letter to Papa and uh, Papa Bada, and they gave us go ahead that we should continue, and Mrs. Olaya should continue leading until we get members. When the, during this establishment, uh, it was informed, the people at home, the hierarchy, at home, Papa Oshofa and others, Papa Abada, were, were informed about the existence of the church. Although they might have done that immediately, it was founded, but it wasn't officially officially exercised until when the establishment took place. From there, the work of God started, and 
the way they at as usual, the Sunday. That that time we used to start service at three o'clock, not in the morning. Three three p.m. That that was the time we used to conduct our service. That time, and then um, from there, the work of God continued. They said we should be doing it Friday first. So we started in our house, two passage road. Then everybody volunteer, oh, it's my house, they will do it next week. It's my house, they will do it next week. Until when God said, enough is enough. No more going about. Get a place for me. We are not taking folding altar here and there. That's how everything started. Because when it happened, just few couples were in a very small room. When we noticed that people, you know, we are multiplying, increasing, but we decided to leave that place. But before it happened so, something happened. We, we, were, play, uh, we were planning to celebrate adult harvest. That was 1969. But as God will have it, uh, uh, a, a message came in from Mrs. Ogunkola, Prophetess Ogunkola, that we shouldn't celebrate uh, adult harvest without without knowing juvenile harvest of which has never happened in celestial fold. So therefore you have you have to think of it that no adult harvest as at now until the juvenile harvest is, is done. At that, at that time, we had to inform people at home about Shofa, about Bada and others that the prophe uh, prophecy has come in that uh, juvenile should be should be should be done should be done firstly before adult celebration. So that's how the juvenile harvest started in London in Celestia Food from London in 1969. But after the harvest, we noticed that uh, people Come in, come in to the extent that uh, the place was very small to accommodate people. Then we decided to move to a place at Ayrton Road, number 17. Ayrton Road, in a, in a warehouse, a small warehouse at Ayrton Road, number 17, Ayrton Road. On getting there, the work of God continued, and we could see the glory of, of God because people are, were coming in. Then, eventually, we decided that it was a time, it was time to look for a bigger place. Then it was mentioned in that meeting that people, because there were many people coming from Southeast, many from uh, north area, but people coming from north, uh, uh, from east, from southeast, are more than people in Islington. So, but as God will have it, they were the first person to locate a a place, a place of worship for us at Lewisham, St John's. St. John's Road to Lewisham. 
them. When we got there, we just we just noticed that the the way God was work, the way God was working, because it is his church. People were trooping, coming, coming. With a short time that we are there, we moved to another another place, another permanent place, which is Hatton Street, of which we are today. Uh, parishes, in actual fact, something happened when we just joined, uh, when we just um, got to Hatton Street. During that time, we had a visitor from home, Baba Bada. Baba was about to come, but unfortunately for him, he was told not to come, not to travel to London. So he had to send Baba Bada. Baba Bada, Yashu Dengide, and some other entourage coming. I think that was 1975. They, they came here, including Baba, uh, uh, Mama, Mama Bada. So she too was among them. Then we came, they came to worship with us. They were with us for a few, few weeks before going back to, to Nigeria. So since then, the work of God is progressing. Uh, but Mama Bada, on that very day, the worship after coming back from airport he was she was the, the one who prophesied that in London there will be 14 parishes even that time when she says so we are even wondering how could Celestia church be extended to 14 parishes and well, for your information now, Celestia Church in, in London only uh -huh. um, you know, more than more, more than 30, if not it's not if not 40 now. You know, so it's it it has uh, spread. The founder of the church never travelled overseas, yet the church experienced exponential growth in Africa and abroad. Of course, with growth comes conflict. It was the same with the apostles of Jesus, and the celestial church wasn't any different in this respect. Nonetheless, the church that was like a seed in the hands of the founder became a tree with many branches. We've spoken to key members of the leadership structure in the UK and Northern Ireland. They've given us their account of the Dowsis expansion, along with their thoughts on how the church can continue to be effective on its mission. Um, yes, Arton Street is the first church outside Africa. Um, church was established 1968, exactly 26th of February. Um, since then, it's been the most senior church and it um, was originally the head of overseas diocese. Um, then we were given that status as head of overseas diocese, the headquarters. Um, we were appointed and head of overseas diocese in the person of our late father, um, Reverend Pastor P. H. I. Joseph, um, blessed memory. Um, after the, pari the church started to spread into other continents and countries, then um, each, each country was given a head of diocese and a, its own diocese. And um, it now broke down to Arton Street being the head of UK and Northern Ireland diocese. But in respect of the relationship with other dioceses and other countries, 
It's still respected as being the first church and the honour is always given to the head. Starting from 1976, when Sir Lester came to this show of Britain, we have a lot of leaders, leaders come and go, right from our national headquarters in street. The first established and known church. Uh, Arten Street is not our first church here. What I mean by that was that when the church was established in 19... Uh, I'm not too sure now. When we started at Bellman Road, although I was not with them then, but I was told that that is where they did the first service. We go about, go about, go about, end up in St. John. That's one of these old church in St. John's in Lincoln Way. Where we did our last service as a tenant before we eventually moved to Atten Street, our own building. It's from there that the, all the churches, right from London, America, Canada, Italy, all over the world, they all stem from Athens Street. Well, originally, um, the first church that actually uh, came out of Athens Street was Elephant and Castle um, Parish. That was 1976, if I'm correct. Um, some people would say it's due to conflict, but you know what I believe is that. God's ways are mysterious, which are different to man. And um, God's promise is that this church will spread. Um, yes, we have his ways that man will not accept, um, but um, I tend to differ that it's not through conflict because after the churches were established and all other parishes do branch out from our churches or any other parish, the relationship between the shepherds and the parishes are still cordial and there's still, there's still unity amongst parishes. So, Conflict or no conflict, I still think it's God's work and he works in mysterious ways. We members of Elvan and Castle did not because we want, I don't live uh, at the street because I want to be shepherd. Uh, people like Job or all those people who support to fund Elvan and Castle. We just live at the street as a matter of principle. And this is to do with our late a superior then uh, Matthew I know who went home for the Lamna Christmas convocation and then on the way coming back from Gatwick he was the lead, the teen, himself and the wife. And that is the genesis, the birth. That is what gave birth to Heaven and Castle. He took up the matter we want to take the British government to court, but the founder, founder of the shop there and said, no, I don't send you there to go and cause we all have a problem for me. So at any rate, we live at the street just on question of principle. It's not that anybody wants to be shepherd or no, 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 no. My thoughts on this is that, um, yes, God did originally say it would be seven parishes through prophecy and revelation, um, I tend to look at it this way. The children of Israel were promised freedom. Moses was sent and it was Moses that was meant to lead. They were one tribe and one nation. But that was just for the journey. There was a journey. Now God foresaw that journey that when they got to certain stages, they were not actually following what God had actually asked them to do. Originally, Papa Shofa had no idea when this church started that it would even come to this side of the country or of the world. But as God would have it, it did come over. Papa Shofa has never been to UK, um, but the church has spread more and beyond what he ever thought. Now, looking at it with the children of Israel, when they now got to the promised land, the person that led them did not enter the promised land. It was handed over to Joshua. And there was another journey again. And then after that, Joshua himself had to split the children of Israel into 12 tribes. There were one tribe before, and eventually now they became 12 tribes, but they are still one nation. 
And that's the way I see Celestial Church. Yes, we were originally meant to be seven, but God decided in his mercy or in his wisdom to make it spread more, but we're still one. There are numerous challenges facing the diocese, but to my mind, the greatest challenge is how to maintain discipline. Because if without discipline, there cannot be fear of God. And without the fear of God, then we are nothing. The reason why I think the research challenge is lack of discipline. Since the demise of that great prophet of our time, Baba Pastor Fanda, LBJ of of blessed memory. The church all over the world have not been the same. Even when late Baba Alexander Biodun Bada took off the mantle, he tried his best. He did his best before he passed on. And when Baba let Philip Prince Joseph take over, he did his best. But the core problem still remain. Because we haven't got an established and accepted leader. And this is made manifest in our young shepherds who goes about establishing churches. If tomorrow I decided to go out, I leave Elvan and Castle to form out another parish of my own will. I will not be accountable to anybody. And nobody has the right or the audacity to query my existence. And the question of discipline and the fear of God to my mind is linked to the question of acceptance of our fathers. Because if we accept them as our fathers, then uh, according to Romans 13, all authority comes from God. There's no authority that is of his own that cannot exist without divine backing. This is the assurance we hold on to. But we of the, we of the older generation we are gradually facing out of the state, but my main worries, my main fear is what will happen to all these our youngsters who is taking over the mantle. What is their program? What is their wish for this church? And not until we are able to address the future of this church, then. Celestial Church's 70th anniversary was widely celebrated across the globe and perhaps for the first time ever since the UK and the Northern Ireland Douses became divided through factionalism, all the groups joined hands to mark this great milestone. Many hoped that this act of courage and humility would ignite a global reconciliation. However, the various factions soon went their separate ways ahead of the 50th anniversary. However, with a recent change in administration at Harton Street, the UK and Northern Ireland Douses still has its sights set on reformation and unification of the church. And on this note, we have some 
a plans ready for this unified diocese. Some activities that will enable us to forge ahead this diocese. And quickly, the first thing that we are planning or what we have set up to bring this diocese to a high standard. This program, as for the first one, we want to organize a training for our shepherds and all church workers where we can be able to equip the shepherds with all the information and all the tenets, ways and manners to look into the affairs of celestial church of Christ in our diocese. Because we notice that there are some certain things that we need to correct and address in the mode of conduct of our members. So this training will be coming up every quarterly and periodically we will now come together and we train our shepherd the ways of God and through the Bible knowledge. In the new setup of um, UK and Ireland, um, firstly we need to be humble to each other as a God uh, implement us to do. Love is very, very most important. Love, when we love each other, things can go on smoothly. And, um, and my view is that uh, most of the shepherds they believe that they are the owner of the Statue of Christ, you know, and I believe that um, um, they need to scrap or take off from their mind. If they didn't take that one off their mind, things cannot go well. Also is to organize um, a conference for all shepherds. All shepherds will now come together. Uh, we will now have a structure or a database for all our shepherds and church workers. Now we now work together and we'll be having a conference and also workshop and also we will now have a council of shepherds where we can interact between ourselves. If there's any problem, how can we solve it? How can we come to the level of our members to let them know that they are much important in each parish and the way they should behave? So this um, council of shepherds will enable us to know how to tackle problems when it arises. To move the UK and Ireland forward um, is to um, emulate Christ and the doctrine of Celestia. And um, as you and I, a shepherd, um, establish a church, you should not think that it's by my power or your power that makes you to be a shepherd or to make you to establish a church. So that's what I think is necessary to put in our back of our mind. Uh, we are trying also to organize an ID card, ID card for all shepherds and church workers that is in this unified diocese so that we can know who is who, that, we, that people should not come from outside claiming that they are shepherds, they are church workers, and we don't know them. So we are trying to do such a thing. We want to organize also um, in magazine and other publications where we can voice out or make ourselves known to the whole world that this unified diocese is really, really working. So some information or vital information related to diocese will be uh, given to members and other parishes through this medium. Also, we are planning um, annual musical competitions where prizes will be given to parishes. That's what uh, we normally do back home in Nigeria. We organize um, competition among the choristers. But this time around is among the churches so then we can see how we can um, encourage our choristers. Also, we are planning to have uh, an annual Bible quiz competition 
also prizes will be given at uh, those stages. And I pray that Almighty God will help us in this thing. And um, finally, we're going to have a uh, Kotsali Daosishan Revival, where we're going to organize prayers to help this diocese and help each parish and help also ourselves uh, against all the principalities of Satan. Well, the Lord has been doing wondrous things in this diocese by unifying us together. And that unification has brought a lot of light and love and understanding into this part of the world. And concerning Celestial Church of Christ, we are, we are progressing in all our administrations, undertakings and plans and visions that we have for Celestial Church of Christ in the United Kingdom. Uh, concerning the, the, the shepherds, that's where we started from. Because they are the people working spiritually, they are people on the field, they are the people feeding the flocks. So we are trying to do something great in their life to renew their strength the ability, the spiritual, uh, 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 spiritual assignment given unto them by uh, uh, establishing uh, a training, a training for the shepherds. And, uh, and the, the training that we are going to give them is about the, the church. And the shepherd will be able to comport themselves and be able to carry out the assignment that the Lord has given unto them. They will have an ID card and uh, they are going to register fully in the international headquarters, K2, so that they will have their number as a shepherd, you see, and uh, we will know that we will give them card. Well, the card, wherever they go, they can identify them as shepherd. Uh, recently, we did the women own, and we, we finished the, uh, uh, the, the evangel evangelic evangelism and the, prof the prophetic side of it, and we did it, and it was so successful. And they are, they are working seriously, and everything is in progress. So, and so, so many other things. Now we are going to start to see to the youths, because we want to really want our youth to be together. Our youth to understand the purpose of their calling, the purpose of this church, to have that understanding so they can be working for the progress of the church, that the glory of the church should be known to the world. Because we said this church is going to cleanse the world. Our own, this is our own time. Our own time will go, but their own time would come later. And these are the youth that we are going to really put everything into their care. So we are now trying to see onto that area. And very soon, everything will, will, will take place. And then this uh, 50th anniversary, we thank God Almighty. There are set of people, there was a set of people that brought this church here, whom God has used in 1968. You see, there was misunderstanding, misunderstanding about the year. The year, like we are celebrating 58, and Nathan Street is celebrating 49. So people were just saying, why is it so different from each other? You see, they brought this church here in 1968, exact 1968, which is 50 years this year. And uh, Celestia started their program, their annual anniversary, yearly anniversary. They started in 1969. That, that is the harvest, the, the anniversary. That works make it to be 49 this year, the harvest. But Celestia as a whole, the, 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 the year they brought it here is 68 which makes it 58. And that is why we are celebrating the 58th anniversary. 
So, and everything is been going on. There's a brochure, there's a souvenir, there's everything they've been doing. We are organizing symposium, revival, uh, youth program, a women program, and uh, so many other things that come along with it. And uh, as God will have it, the pastor himself is coming to grace the occasion uh, with, with us. So concerning Celestial Church of Christ, there are going to be a lot of changes. That's why I employ everybody, every area, every, every, every department, you no, know, every Celestial, no, you know, to join us. Let us work together because uh, if we are divided, there's nothing we can do. You know, divided, we cannot build anything, but we come together uh, in, in unison. There, there, there is a lot we can do. We want to showcase Celestia in this part of the world to let the whole world know that Celestia Church of Christ was sent by God, the Lord Jesus Christ, to the world. So this 50th anniversary is going to bring a lot of joy to this country. And it's going to be a lot of uh, uh, a lot of transmission to this country. It's going to it could the 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 setup of this church in this country. It's going to bring love, a, a rapid changes into this into the country for for Celestial Church of Christ. So let everybody come and join us. I pray again that the love of God will uh, will, will begin to move with us, the power of God and the Holy Spirit of God will be with us and uh, we guide all our youths, all our women, all our elders, and every area, may God begin to guide us and be with us and bring peace unto us in Jesus' name.